Hey, Francis, how you doing? All right, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Long time. I'm here with boxing. Uh, no, 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 I'm here with boxing, beats and rhymes and uh, European boxing. Um, hey. Yeah, I am just want to hear your take on um, Dean Powell. Because like, I knew you knew him. Um, obviously, I know you know him. So what's, so what's your take on, obviously, his death? Well, I'm gutted. Gutted. Totally. You, you're gutted, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know... I, I still can't believe it. I was told. I was told when I finished work today that he um, he jumped on the train line. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He Apparently, we just heard from. He just um, he threw himself on on the train line. What was that then? Going to work? I have no idea. You know, the, the news is the news is sketchy. Everything's just coming in. So how did um, you know him? What in what capacity did you know him, Francis? Well, I knew him from the beginning. I mean, from the very start. Okay. Nineteen what? Nineteen eighty-eight. Was he a, was he um, a matchmaker for for um, for the Hans? No, no. Um, Trainer. No, he was. I I mean, when he came over from, I forgot where he came from. Now he um, <laughs> um, up north somewhere, and he was looking for a job with um, looking for a gym to train. And wow. I met him at Thomas and Beckett. Mm-hmm. And and I took him all around London to try and find him somewhere to stay to sleep. Because really? he met me in, um, he met me at um, Thomas Beckett, and he asked me if I knew where where he can stay. So I took him. Now Francis. Yeah, yeah, it's Fra- we... yeah, it's Francis. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, Francis, let me just say it's a pleasure to be in the same uh, chat room with you, sir. And you were a good yeah, fighter, and I watched. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, thanks. Yeah, I just want to give those acknowledgements there. And, yeah. Um, you did have a good career. And, um... But yeah, so Francis, um, so when's the last? So when's the last time you talked to Dean? I spoke to Dean about a month ago, and mm-hmm. funny enough, right? I thought yesterday or two days ago I must give Dean a call because otherwise he might think I'm only calling for tickets. Exactly <laughs> what I thought. And today, today when I got in. They told me this. I could not believe it. I almost rang him up yesterday. And now I'm thinking, sitting here, right, gutted, thinking, why didn't I call him? Why didn't I call him? And after I heard him, after, after I heard the news, I rang up his mobile. I just went on the answer machine. Just to make sure that, you know, no one's p- telling lies or something. Yeah, the, the press friends it's come out. For yeah, the press friends right? come out from... Um, a press statements come out from from uh, Frank Warren, Frank Warren's thing, and, and they're deeply um, saddened about the news and stuff like that. There's a lot of speculation, yeah. speculation going out that uh, maybe he was sacked, or because we're trying to speculate on the reason for him, his untimely death. You know, because he seemed like he's a young guy. He's, he was he what? He was uh, what's it? 30, yeah, 40, 45. Dean, yeah, Dean was always yeah, he's around that age, but Dean was always under pressure with things. You know. Yeah, that's what that's what we heard. That's what um, Reese was saying. He's under pressure, but under pressure from Frank, yeah. No, no, I won't say that. I won't say that. I've known Dean. I've known Dean since 1988, and okay. it's always everything he does is under pressure, under pressure. You know. Yeah. Because everything he does, he tries to put his hundred percent. Yeah. And he, he tries too hard for everything he do. He tries too hard. Yeah, we were saying Reese. Reese was saying that he hasn't got no kids. And he's just got a wife as well. So um, yeah, you can see a hundred percent that he put his life into into boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Dean hasn't got any children. Yeah, that's what he's heard. It's it's very sad. Um, well, we don't want to take up too much of your yeah. time, Francis. So, but we thought I thought I'd call you because you know I know you know about him. Um, I'm just going around yeah, yeah, yeah. and that. But um, I'm, pre- I'm, I'm, I mean, the last my last two years pro career, he was my manager for my last two years. Yeah. Okay. He uh, managed me last, you know, since 2000 and 2001 and 2002. Yeah. So have you got any, like, um, good stories that people could t- so just sort of, like, even out all the gloom? No, it's a bit too early yet, yeah, but, you know. Yeah, you're still in shock. Yeah, you're still, yeah, you're still, yeah. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know the story. I'm just getting over this shock. I'm, yeah, yeah. I don't know I'm, the story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, Francis. Well, we, you know what, Francis, we, 
we'll probably catch up another time. We appreciate you giving us our t- giving us your time, mate. Uh, bro. All right, man. Take care. Bye. Right. Bye. Damn, he was caught up in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got to call. Um, I'm gonna call Rob Allen as well in the thing because he knew Dean Powell as well. So he might as well do our rounds, innit? Mm. Like, yeah, he so it shows you how fucking right. Well, he knew him. He took him around in that. Mm. Cause I was, cause I'm, I'm on his Facebook. I'm on the Facebook, and I was the one who told him that he threw himself on the train. So he's getting the information from me straight up, innit? But I can. Yeah. A lot of people are just really cut up about it because I've, when I put it on the Facebook, the boxes have come out, man. A lot of boxes have come out. I'll buy it. Actually, let me call a thing before I do that. Let me call um, uh, Eric. Eric Ochen. That's who he has to say. And also, he's got a fight with Finn coming up soon as well, isn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah so maybe. he has. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Fighting? He's fighting. He's fighting Finn, the facts, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me call him now. I'm calling him now. Let's see what What's he has to say. What's Smith? He's fighting one of the Smiths, bros. Is it? Yeah, it's Smith Brothers. I reckon they're taking. What do you reckon? You reckon they beat him? Yeah, I think so. He's, f- he's fighting the the small fat one. Eric. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How you doing, champ? Um, we just uh, we we're talking. We're talking to most of the fighters, asking about um Dean Powell. Have you have you heard the news? Yeah, yeah, I've heard about it, man. Yeah. What's your take? What's your take on it? He was saying it's sad to hear. It's hard. To, it's sad to hear. You know, um, anyone pass away, and obviously Dean Powell, you know, done a lot for boxing. Yeah, it really sucks to hear that. Mm. So, you, you, what's your memories of uh, Dean Powell? I mean, Dean Powell, you know what I'm saying, was a nice guy. And actually got me one of um, some sparring in, where was it? It was in Belgium. Yeah, he organized some sparring. He was a nice guy. He was a warm guy. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he, he was a good guy to know and be around. Mm. Yeah. Because the news is just shocked, obviously. Like, we're hearing that he threw himself on the, in the, on the train, on the, threw himself in front of a train. And, um, you know, from what I can gather about him, you know, it's, it's hard to hear that because, you know, he was a fair, he's not exactly old guy. And, it's, it's, you know what I mean? So, a guy to go out that way is, uh, after all the, all the years he put in boxing is quite hard. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. So, it's, you know, and, uh, and I was just thinking when my manager told me, because Brian, you know, called me and told me, and I was like, well, you know, and you were just thinking, we just got to be grateful for every day. And, you know, and I was thinking, you know, the most important thing is, you know what I'm saying, is health. You know what I'm saying, your your family and, you know, because because health, you know, because wealth is not everything. You know what I'm saying? Someone can be can be wealthy and, you know, seem like he's, he's happy, but really inside, is he happy? So it's really just to be grateful for, you know what I'm saying, small things, because to be honest, today we're here, tomorrow we're not. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I hear that, man. Well, and then you, obviously you got a fight coming up as well. Sorry, we can change it slightly. You got a fight coming up? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How how you how are you preparing for that? You you're in the best shape, whoever. You looking forward <laughs> to, to to taking the British belt? Without doubt. You know what I'm saying this is my time. It's my time to win. My time to shine. <laughs> you know, uh, Liam Smith. The beef is gonna get beat. I uh, hope so. Yeah, yeah man. So. Beef when so when are you gonna come to Liverpool? I beg your pardon. When are you going to come to Liverpool? I'll be there. I'll I'll be there on time, and I'll be there to win the title. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope so. Eric, Eric, you, you know, are. This is my time. You know what I'm saying um, I'm known as the eagle. You know what I'm saying the eagle is an awesome bird, and eagle love eat all kind of meat, especially the beef. <laughs> it's I've been a good fire. I'm a good chef, so I'm looking to fire the beef come September 21st. Okay, Eric, cool. that's brilliant. Well, you know, I know it's obviously put some light on that, but we're obviously Eric. I mean, all right, why well, you got me on that one, Eric? Um, well, anyway, Eric, yeah, what we're gonna do, we're gonna catch up with you probably um, midweek or whatever, and then have a have a uh, separate interview where we're just talking oh, about oh, you and your thing. But uh, we appreciate Eric, you giving us your time and, and give us a little uh, input on onto your, your relation and um, what you knew about Dean Powell. All right, oh, blessing, blessing. All right, champ, take care. It was L Joe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, bro? You right? Yeah, I'm good, bro. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm on fire, man. Get me. I was you get, get me because obviously, like Dean Powers has passed, and I want to get uh, your take on that. And what you know, because okay, I remember well, he, he was a it was I know he was an integral part of your career. You get me? Yeah. Um. Firstly, like um, I'm in shock. Like the rest of the boxing world, I'm in shock. Mm. You know. Words can't describe how shocked I am. I mean, um, it seemed 
it seemed like a happy, it seemed like his life was happy. You know what I mean? It seemed like he was like he was like living the dream, got a sort of thing. Wasn't he? he was, you know, he's a, he's a um, manager, trainer, um, matchmaker, mm. traveling the world. You know what I mean? It seemed like he's like living like you know everyone's dream kind of thing. You know, kind of sort of school. You know what I mean? People, yeah. people involved in the game, love and the job. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and like yeah. He's, Okay, I'm just very shocked, isn't it? I can't really say much than that, can you? You're just shocked, obviously, it's disappointed, you know what I mean? Mm. Somebody so properly in the game that you're not going to see ever again, you know what I mean? Because mm, mm. I, I remember... I was seeing my... Go on. Mm? No, I was going to say... I was going to say, because obviously, um, you know, I know that obviously the matchup with Harry Simon, uh, I think that was obviously part of you getting, getting your world title shot at that time. You know what I mean? I don't know if he was part of part of that and... And uh, most of your career of, of some of the fights you had against Hakalu and some of the fights. I remember you wanted to fight Fernando Vargas. I remember that one. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, Dean, Dean was Dean was um, involved in my career from start mm, to finish. Yeah, I mean, not not, not involved. He, he never trained me or managed me, but him, him and Jimmy Tibbs were very very close. Yeah, yeah, and Jimmy, Jimmy Tibbs taught him. He had Lawrence over Jimmy. Jimmy Tibbs taught him a lot. Mm. And yes. I, Yes, Lee, um, I know. I know he called. I know he helped out in the corner for a couple of fights. Yeah. I'm gonna have to think. I, I, can't, I can't think of off my head, but I know. I know he definitely um, was in my corner for one or two. I know he was. He was in my corner. Well, he, he was in OJ, OJ Abraham's corner when I fought OJ twice. Oh, yeah, I remember that fight. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Um, I remember. I remember the, the first time OJ OJ shit himself. Yeah. yeah. And um, he he got, he got he got disqualified didn't he, for it for for for, for um. For me and me, <laughs> yeah. And then like the second time, um, the second time I remember, um, I fought him, and OJ was bouncing in the corner, yeah. Mm. And I was, um, I was giving OJ, OJ the eyeballs, and I remember D saying, "Yeah, look at him, look at him. Don't look away, don't look away, don't look away. Stay, stay. You know what I mean? Don't be scared, don't be scared. Look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. You know what I mean? Don't look away, don't look, don't, don't look away, don't look away, don't look away. You know what I mean? Stay him out, stay him out as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, like me and OJ had, me and OJ had, um. Had a wicked, um, wicked fight. Yeah, I remember that. I remember. That. Yeah, I remember that fight. So it was. So it was. It was a good guy. He's, he's, you know, this is the thing with the reports are saying that he, he threw himself on the on the on the train tracks on the train in front of a train. Um, you know, I thought, I thought because I mean, only only he and God knows why. Obviously, he might he might come out. The only thing I can I can say, that I can think of, think people think of it. It could be stress, couldn't it? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I know. I know um, he worked twenty four seven. I mean. I mean you know, he's, 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 everyone knows. Uh, everyone knows. Um, everyone knows. Um, Dean's Dean's. Uh, he's probably on twenty four seven. He's. I mean, he's, 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 the job he does. People pull out of fights at any time, don't they? Yeah. And he's the one that's. He's the one that's. Um, he's the one that has to get. Um, what do you call it? A replacement, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Substitutions. Yeah. When when people can't make obviously when they can't for the fight, he's the one who finds in the sub. Uh, okay, yeah, exactly, yeah. and like he might he might have two or three of them in a, in a show, or like one or two a week. So he always used to say, uh, even though he, you know he was, he was a good job, maybe financially, but I know he was very he was very busy, very very busy. You know what I mean? So you so, so, so you see that? Co- go on, go on. Sorry, go on. Hey, go ahead. Man, I said that can cause stress, isn't it? I mean, obviously, like a man who a man who works twenty two hours a day, twenty hours a day, you can doesn't matter who you are, you're gonna get stressed on your back. Obviously, you're not going to go that far. I'm, I'm only speculating. You get me? I'm only speculating now. So I don't know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you see the matchmaking position. Would you say it was lucrative? Uh, you know, because he was in the corner as well. Like, he wouldn't... You know, obviously, he loved boxing and his whole life was dedicated. So you don't think financially that he would have been set up for life that even if he stopped boxing at the time, that he'd be all right? Or... Would it? Yeah. Again, I don't want to speak about his financial business. Yeah, but yeah, I mean... of course, yeah. I would say I would say it's a lucrative job, but it was with a it was with a, um, a lucrative manager, wasn't it? Promoter, it was, yeah, it was, Frank, uh, Frank Warren. Yeah, yeah. It was Frank Warren for probably, probably twenty years, so I don't know what he was getting or what could have made nothing about his money, but he was a top promoter, so I think it would have been comfortable. But again, money is everything, isn't it? As as you saw just yeah. today, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like I just talked to um, Eric Ochan and I talked to um, Frasa and Popo. So I'm just making a little. So I obviously be asked a lot, and say your tribute to uh, Dean Power to pull it out there so people can comment yeah, and, yeah. and play rest in peace. You want to try? You want to try and get all the um, something like you know Mark Tibbs? 
Oh, I don't, yeah, so, I haven't got, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not in, I'm not in connection with him at the moment. I only, I only, so, only want to talk to the yeah, because I know he knows him pretty well. But you see, like obviously, I talk to some of the fighters. Like I got to talk to one guy in America, um, Rob Allen, who fought Bernard Hopkins. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, and like some, some other people I got to get to. But you know, if I, if anything, I think Apollo, I think Apollo might might try and cut it. But yeah, because yeah, I know that that was your trainer, and, and obviously it's, it's quite it's quite deep. You know what I mean? It's quite shocking. You know what I mean? Yeah, fuck it does. It must be all over the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne, we take home. We'll, we'll talk soon, yeah? Oh, that's best on the call, yeah. No problem, team. Bye. All right, you all set. Right, what I've been told he's done, he's, as a train's come, he's thrown himself over on the platform. Whoa. And actually, the train that he threw himself on, I can't remember. Because I was told, and, um,. Because there was train delays, and it was actually it was actually given reference saying, yeah, you know, as there's a train there, someone's thrown themselves over on the platform. And then I saw Spencer Fear on today, because like they're doing the toe to toe show tomorrow to talk about Mayweather versus Canelo. But now they're gonna have to extend the show to talk about Dean Powell first. So it's gonna be like a sort of tribute. Whoa. And then talking about Canelo versus Mayweather. Wow. But yeah, it's a... It's a it's do, you, do, you know, do you know which train line... Was it was it a tube or train? And was it... Where, what part of, was it in London? Where was it? it? It was... I think it was in London, yeah. But I'm not too sure which one fully. It may have been just a train platform, though. Because it wasn't, like, put to me as an underground thing. It was put to me as a train platform. Have you got any news that Frank Warren sacked him before this or or hired a new matchmaker I'm speculating to feel like why uh, literally this is like let's just say it's either yesterday or today it happened so this is like very very new mm -hmm. so you know like literally it's, it's, it's the old cold cop situation suicide man yeah why would the man do that like you know what no one speculated well, on what gone you got to realise but you got to realise, you see Errol, yeah? Yeah. His career, everybody's career who did business, say, with Frank Warren. Dean Powell's career was in a lot of people's hands from the 90s. Nassim Hamid? Was it, was it, what did he work with Nassim Hamid? Everybody. He worked with everybody, yeah. even yeah. from behind Don't the scenes. you got to realise, Dean Powell, remember, Dean Powell... Started off from the 90s, 80s when Thomas the Beckett gym was open over Old Kent Road. And he started off as a cleaner, just cleaning out the buckets and sweeping up the gym. Wow. wow. So his meteoric rise is a very, um, you know, it's a highly acknowledged one. Wow. Wow. So, so he, started, he, really, he really did start from the bottom. Like Drake grafted, from the, grafted from the bottom, innit? Yeah. I think the Dean Powell who boxes is a different Dean Powell. It's a different guy. There's a boxer named Dean Powell. He's got, a, I mean, not hasn't got a great record. It's a, it's a, I, don't think, I don't think this Dean Powell the trainer ever boxed. Because if yeah. you're saying that he was um, he was cleaning from the A's, that's when he would have been boxing. Yeah, I think Reese's Reese's um, things on on thing. European, you still there? Fritz. Yeah, man, I'm still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, you, Reese's Reese's things gone on um, like yours, European. I think his network's crashed for a bit. So we, mm. we're filling the gaps, but boy, from what we're hearing, it's um, it's quite tragic, man. It's quite it tragic. Re Reese, Reese put the give us the best of the background, but I like to hear the information. Obviously, that maybe that information won't, won't come out. Maybe if uh, Frank sacked him, because I don't understand the reason. We know he's got kids and stuff like that. I think when Reece he ain't got no kids. He's got no kids. He's got no kids. No, nope, he's got no kids. He's been married for like fifteen years. I was told, but he got no kids. Wow. So his whole life was dedicated towards boxing, man. Wow. It's, 24 hour job. I was it was quite painful when I heard it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I d I didn't really I didn't really know what I know about him. I didn't really like because he was friend, but I don't want to hear a man like that just throws himself off, you know. He's a hard working guy, you know what I mean? Because um, yeah, I was on my Facebook, Rob Allen from from the States, you know the one who fought um, Bernard Hopkins challenge for Bernard Hopkins yeah. away belt. He came out and goes, he met him, he goes, he was a really nice guy, he helped him, he helped him. I think maybe from the amateurs or somebody. He knew him, obviously. A lot of guys come out. Um, um, Francis Apopo has come out and said something. Also, Ashley Fairfane on the Facebook page. Yeah. yeah, he's a really nice guy. Was You know what I mean? Everyone's come out and said he was a really decent guy. He was a cool guy. Yeah, people 
people have said like I mean because there's regular everyday trainers who are not per se highly profiled they're just regular everyday guys and Dean Powell has been known to still me still there Rich? Uh, he'll come back in a second stuff but for, uh, that was Reece, Reece. That was him. <laughs> nah, yeah, oh, yeah, he goes mine again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, he's, he'll come, he'll come back in a bit. Reese has got the scoop, man. Yeah, mm. he's got, he'll come back in a bit. Reese has, Reese has definitely got the scoop on the whole um, situation because obviously he knows all the background and stuff and that. But it's, um, it's, it's from what you're hearing, like you, you guys, it sounds even, it's quite deep, man. It's quite deep. Yeah, Reece. it is. I mean, yeah, go on, Reece. It is, and but you know, but you know what it is, though. Mm. Obviously, as I was talking. As I was told, I was told by a such person that Dean was always under a lot of pressure, mm. especially from Frank. Go on. Because you got to realise, if you notice, say like Ricky Burns, since he's left, Frank yeah. Warren. Yeah. You notice his last two fights, he's not performed too great. That's what we was just saying. Yeah. Yes. Go on. So now you can see Ricky Burns was well matched. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Ricky Hatton was well matched. Let's look at, say, Ricky Hatton, yeah? I just yeah. said the same thing. When Ricky Hatton left, yeah? Yeah. yeah. That's when he went to America to fight Luis Colazo. Colazo, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And then he struggled against Colazo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You look at Amir Khan, just before Amir Khan left, he gets knocked out by Breedis Prescott. Right, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yep, that's right. And then, so you can see this common pattern where... Dean Powell's had involvement. Yeah. And you're seeing some significant results in these people's lives. Yeah. I mean, you... Preach. Preach. He, he, he had Nassim Hamid's career. He, he Nassim, did. That's when Nassim Hamid, when he went against August Sanji, he looked terrible. Before the Brera fight, even though Beats will say, obviously, Brera beat him. Yeah, he did, but he just... You can yeah, see he, he, was, he was matched over his head. He was matched over his head. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is what we're saying. So, Dean Powell... He's he's a wizard then when it comes to matchmaking. He's been a he's been an yeah. intricate part of Frank's whole whole empire. Yeah, of course he has. Of course he has. That's why you know he Frank has got to select who replaces him very carefully because that's mm-hmm. a specialized role. You can't just get anyone to do matchmaking. You'll get your of fight buried. Not. But it's like you look at Bruce Trampler with top rank. Yeah. You like I was remember I, I remember reading they said top rank is the best for any fighter to be built up. Because Bruce Trampler's another one. Who, uh, these guys just know matchmaking. There's there is an art form to matchmaking. Yep. Like I remember when said, we reference. It's a twenty four seven job. You got to have your ears to the ground. Like you might have a, a statistically uh, fight fight with a good record statistically, and if you could just yeah. find out, okay, he's, he's his training ain't been too well. He's got a little injury or he's unfocused. Then you go, okay, time to get him. You 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 gotta have yeah. your ear on that. You gotta have your ear on it. Yeah. You know. So those hidden hand details are very important as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you see another thing as well. Mm. What um, uh, what what else was our what else was our show? Um, even when we look at this whole situation, and with Dean, that I was you know it was put to me as well that you like he. He was kind of um. He was Frank Warren's. He was. He lap was. Dog. Yeah, he, he, the word of a lap dog is a bit hard. I think he was. He, he was. He was a intricate part of of Frank's. Um, he's a cornerstone. That you know, like a, a, you know, you got a table, you got one of the legs. He was one of the legs. Yeah. No, and I, I think, this is what I think. What um, Reese was going to say is that Warren used to lean heavy on him, like sort of like yeah, dump on him quite heavy. Very okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, because it was did. that sort of situation. Yeah, you, you can see it, like you can see it, but you see with the Cleverly fight. Do you reckon yeah. Frank? That was Frank's last champion, and all of a sudden now we know he's died. Do you reckon Frank? After that, Frank might think you've you've had your days, and we need to move on, Dean. Because Frank, because Dean was getting paid for in the corner of Nathan Cleverly and the matchmaking. That's how he's making his double money. So, well, I don't think he could really dismiss. Dean as as such because you know what Le- Nathan Cleverly is only one fighter and fighters come a dime a dozen but guess what in yeah. the process of every matchmaker mm. has always had a misjudgment yeah you know I mean you, you look at back in the day when you look at 
George Francis and them guys and Tommy Eastwood stable and them. Yeah. Barney Eastwood, sorry. Yeah, Barney Eastwood. They 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 made their mistakes. When you look at like when they had Charlie Magri when he boxed Elio Diaz. Yeah, yeah. And he got knocked out. Remember, at that, remember but at that time I think Elio Diaz had about fifteen losses, thirty wins. Yeah, 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 yeah. Charlie Magri was unbeaten. Kicking up European guys, kicking up you know, yeah, no yeah, they, yeah, they do get it wrong. You know, do it's like like you say, Frank Bruno when he was coming up and they put him in bo- him in with Bone Crusher Smith. Oh, and, and like, Jumbo Cummings. Yeah. And Jumbo Cummings nearly knocked him out. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it can go wrong. You can only do it to a certain degree. You know? You and, just said George and, Francis. He committed suicide. That was Bruno's trainer. George Francis. Oh, shit. Did, did he commit suicide? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, he yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, that's actually right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, Bruno, I see, I did. Yeah, he's, what, what's, what's getting on it? This is a little pattern here. The matchmakers top it up in themselves. So, yeah, what? See, listen to this, yeah? So... Who was the matchmaker for um, for Frank Maloney in in terms of the price one? Because obviously, in the matchmaking with price, because because uh, when Frank Maloney had Lennox Lewis and he was guiding his career at that point, doing all right. But obviously, Frank's gone off his thing, so maybe Frank lost his matchmaker. Who was the matchmaker for Frank Frank Maloney at that time? I don't know, but I do know, yeah. Maybe Dean was involved in that. Maybe I don't know. He could have, because remember. Frank Maloney used to work for Frank Warren. Yeah, I've he... seen it in several interviews. Yeah, they did. Where he said he used to work for Frank Warren. Well, he used to, he used to work for um, the other guy who used to coach, who used to, who used to have, um, who's the world work champion? Lloyd Hannigan. Yeah. Who's the, guy, who's yeah. the manager for Lloyd Hannigan? What's the old guy? Um, you know the old Mickey guy. Mickey Duff. The, uh, yeah, Mickey Duff. Mickey Duff, yeah, was Mickey, the Duff one who, yeah. Mickey Duff was the one who brought Maloney in. And, See? Um, Maybe Mickey and uh, by the Maloney, but they see the, 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 you, you brought a valuable point about this matchmaking thing. It's 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 more important than what we re- actually realize. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Because you gotta realize, yeah. You see these guys, yeah. They can make you unbeaten for a million fights, and they can make you a million losses. And they can make they can give you a million wins or a million losses. It's, it's that sort of thing. Mm. Like, and and they can they can put you in. Career defining fights and career ending fights. Yeah. Like they know what like they know what they're doing. It's only when you sort of get to a Mayweather level where you can be let out the cage and fight anyone, then matchmaking is not very important because they can put you with anywhere, anyone, and you can handle your business regardless. Yeah, it can always go wrong, man. You see what happened to Mickey Bay the other day with John Molina. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. Well, well that will you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. You know? And he was winning the fight. He was winning the fight. Yeah, he was winning the fight. But this is this is boxing. He got he got claim. But Joe Kazaki's Joe Kazaki's whole legacy, apart from when he left Frank Warren with the the Roy Jones fight and uh, the Hopkins fight, Hopkins. didn't have him Hopkins. But he done not. He, 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 you know, he got knocked down both of them fights. But he got knocked down in other fights. But he got up and won them fight. Joe Kazaki done is the only one who probably escaped, got away with it, isn't it? Yeah, but then well, I thought he lost against Hopkins. Yeah, see, well, I don't know about that, man. I, I, I thought Joe Kazaki ran away from it personally. European, what'd you say about uh, that? Yeah, I thought Joe Kazaki won. I had Hopkins winning it, man. Yeah, well, that's two, that's two, two. So we got he landed like, the better European. punches, didn't he? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Europeans. Yeah, he, he did land the better. Hopkins did land the better punches. I don't know about that, bro. I, I think he looked like he was gassed and he was holding on to the referee. Kazaki looked like he could have stopped him, mate. But that's not... Uh, we're, we're not going to uh, talk about uh, that. We're not going uh, to uh, talk quick, about yeah, that. Let me just do a pause real quick, yeah? All right, cool, cool. Let me just do a pause real quick. Uh, European, one day, yeah, we're going to chat on the PEDs because I liked how you explained a few things. Yeah, no problem. We'll do it. I'm happy with that, yeah. It's, yeah, some of your right past videos, I like... But sorry, let's get back on topic, please. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say we're gonna we need to talk to Aris Ariza, uh, European next week sometime. So I hope you're available. You as well, you mm-hmm. as well, Reese. So we can yeah. get, catch up with Ariza on 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 what's what's going on with him and Pacquiao. But yeah, back to the subject, guys. Sorry about that. All right, so with, with Dean Powell, yeah, you, you know, you're pointing out how how important the matchmaking thing is. I didn't realize you could actually have a guy. So what are you trying to say? A guy can be actually crap, yeah. But with the matchmaking, he can look like he can look like he's something. Then, yeah, but is that my? You know, go on. But you, but uh, Errol. Yeah, uh, Errol. Yeah, go on. Look where it's become. Yeah, let's look at when we watch. Say, for example, we watch shows like X Factor. Yeah, where the mics are pre-auto tuned, 
The songs are auto-tuned. The singers may not be good singers, mm. but with the marketing and the well... That they're all products. We're all become products which are well-packaged. Yeah. So because we're all, like, well-packaged products... Mm. It might not even like we might not even be good or nice products, but because we're packaged so well, people that don't really know better fall for it. Fall for it. Yeah, it will and, fall uh, for it. And when it comes to like, okay, this well match make thing, like, it's that situation because I remember when um Ricky Hatton was built up so well. Yeah. And the whole Ricky Hatton flirt thing happened. I was in New York for three months at the time, but before, before I left, everyone was like, ah. Oh, Flair's going to go round eight with a body shot, round eight with a body shot. <laughs> yeah. And people never really looked at Floyd properly, but we got caught up in the hype of Ricky Hatton's body yeah, shot. Yeah, 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 we did. Because yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. he's stopping everyone with that body shot, man. And then, okay, when you that, like, I think it was Freddie Pendleton. Yeah, I remember that. Ricky Hatton hit him with a body shot and just killed him, innit? Exactly. See, now, I, I, I remember Pendleton. guys like Pendleton from when he was his peak with Whitaker. With I knew when them guys were past it. Got, Exactly. Yeah, we knew. Uh, yeah, I knew he was past it, but he made him look. He made Ricky look like a freaking monster, you know. <laughs> that. And then the thing is now, when I looked at Freddie Pendleton, yeah, because yeah. I remember him from fighting Penel Whitaker, and yeah. he put up a fight against Penel. So when I'm looking at him on um, Ricky Hatton's record, yeah, I'm thinking, boy, you know, it's something to think about for Ricky. And it was because all the all the guys. Who Ricky Hatton boxed when he was being built up on um, Sky? Yeah, I saw them guys on Channel Five boxing in America. Mm. I saw those guys, so I knew that Ricky had something to think about. Even like Ray Oliveira and them guys, but yeah. then yeah. I yeah. never really understood matchmaking properly per se. Red, they were all done. They were all way past their best. Ray Oliveira, and, Vim- and then not all that, they all moved up from lightweight. John Faxton. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I remember him getting floored by Eamon McGee and thinking, boy, if McGee came with a little yeah, more ambition, yeah. he would have beat him. Yeah. yeah, and then McGee's not even, per se, a puncher. No. Well, well, he, he was at a certain level. No, he wasn't. Yeah, in domestic a certain, level. In, in actually, domestic yeah. level, BC, he was. Eamon McGee. Yeah. He if weren't he a puncher, a... man. Go look well, at his box rec. Eamon McGee weren't no puncher. Yeah, when he, st- when, he, when he stepped up in certain class, all right, when he, all right, you know what, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. All right, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> but then, you know why, you know why, you know what, again, we're getting caught up in the hype because he was perceived to be a big puncher, rough, tough guy from Ireland, this and that. And when you're yeah, right, when, Ricky, think, when, Ricky, Rick, when Ricky flawed him, when, sorry, when Eamon flawed him, I was like, damn. You know, you, you kind of thought well, Ricky might get flawed again. And you saying, go on, go on, Reese, with the matchmaking. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what it was. And I think what it is, you see with boxing and imagery, yeah? Yeah. This is where the imagery thing is, yeah? You know, like, okay, me being an amateur boxer. Yeah. yeah. I've been on circuits, yeah? And obviously, I've been around boxing traveller families all my life, yeah? And I've trained with them all my life. I've seen, say, for example, now heavyweight boxers who can't get matched. But there's only traveller boxers that they can get matched up against. <laughs> I've seen people say, ah, he's a traveller, he's tough. you got to watch him. Um, yeah, all right, put him up against him. So there's also, it's like this sort of, there's an image of, you know, because a fighter's a tough Irish traveller, that he's going to be a certain way. I think with Ricky being matched up against Eamon McGee, that was a sort of thing that was going to be, um, that's what we were... Um, Sort of expecting to an extent. We were kind of thinking, ah, Ricky's going to be tested again. So, you know, and bearing in mind what, I must have been, what, I was still young at the time, so I was still learning the game. Mm. That, because I caught wind of Ricky Hatton in 2004. Mm. And I started boxing at 15, so I was picking up as I go along. Even when it comes to Ben Tacky. Because oh. Ben Tacky had good names yeah. on his record. Yeah. And you knew you, knew you were going to get 12 rounds out of a good, solid African fighter. Yeah, because that's one thing with African fighters. You know, you're gonna get, you can get a good twelve rounds out of them. Mm. So again, we thought, oh, he's, a light, yeah. he's a lightweight again. You, you really said he's a lightweight. Ben Tacky was a lightweight. That's where he had his moves. That... that and then when you check it, that it's just like raw, like. But then it was easy to get caught up in the fight. And then I remember, like, there's a there's a boxer 
who's on he's he's just started turning professional now, Billy Morgan his name is. Me and Billy Morgan were at West Ham together. And I remember Billy on the back practicing all the Ricky Hatton body shots. Mm. And he started doing them to a few guys in sparring. And then I remember when he was doing them in sparring, he's like, yeah, man, they're the shots that Ricky Hatton knocked everyone out with. And it was working in the gym, but you see what happened now? When Ricky Hatton, when Billy was doing the ABA level, there was a, there was a level where P, that wasn't really working. Because, you know, you know, you're boxing amateurs. At the time, it was four two minutes or three three minutes. Mm. And guys would just pick you off. But I think, again, we do get caught up in the image, the hype. But I suppose that's what we pay promoters for. Yeah. And that's the mm-hmm. only way you can, you know, be promoted now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, everything's become a sort of soap opera showmanship type of how you promote a product. You're not going to get, like, the Berry Gordy days where, you know, like, you had to audition in front of everyone on Motown. Yeah, and yeah. Prove your worth. Prove your worth, isn't it? Yeah. You're not going to get those days anymore. Yeah. Because I, I was I was sold on Anthony Farney. No, you, you guys might laugh at that. But this is when I was new to boxing. It was sort of yeah. Anthony Farney, Ali, Ali. Right, they were big yeah. Anthony Farney until they see you get knocked out by Tagaloo. And, and, <laughs> and, and Anthony Farney and Kevin Lear. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then I remember because I saw them guys when I was at West Ham once. That like, they came down there. Yeah. Nah, so <laughs> and and go, you got Gomez as well. Gomez was another. Yeah, Michael right? Gomez. Yeah, Michael Gomez. I was uh, Gomez and coming with the, the sombreros and and the Mexican hat and you know what I mean. Like I was sold on on yeah, Gomez is going to be this and that and and uh, was it was Reed with them as well and and well, some of go on. Know, yeah, I remember that camp because they was all kind of they was all around Ricky Hatton. Yeah, yeah, they were, yeah, they're all from Manchester. They're all from Manchester. Yeah, they were all around Ricky Hatton. Yeah. So they you all... see, with Ricky Hatton's hype, there was a certain overspill at that time of all, for man... all that of area. Yeah. And Ricky was the well, I think Reese is Reese is um, out for a bit shortly, but he's still there, Reese. Nah, I think he he's probably thing gone down. But wow, Reese is hitting some some yeah, serious Reece, stuff, man. It shows, you know, it just shows you. Just, you know what? He just he he shows how valuable Dean Dean Power was, man. Yeah, it's it not, really, it's, it's, not, it's, not it's like, actually gone, gone. It's not the product anymore. It's like it's it's like it's how you promote it now. Yeah, yeah. You oh, could yeah. be like the greatest fighter in the world, and if you're promoted, shit, yeah. you ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's gonna be very hard to go places. Yeah, definitely. I think the tr- and you know what, boxing is the truth, man. You know what I mean? And what we see when people say now Ricky's a paper champion and isn't that isn't that? I mean, I mean even Eddie. This is this all about Eddie. Eddie. This is about Eddie. Eddie probably believed in the hype of Ricky. No, to be <laughs> honest, yeah. When, look, when I when I said that, yeah, I didn't record it. It's not going. To, I'm just saying. When I say paper, you you can see like I remember when he got beat up by um, Carl Johansson, and he he hasn't really improved much from then, and like. He's been matched well. He's a good fight. He has improved. He has improved. But you can't... I can't really class him as, as a proper... Ch- no, no, no. Not- he's not the lineal champion anyway, is he? So yeah. everyone else other than the lineal champion is the paper champion. Mind you, the lineal champion he- is up in arms right now because Broner don't look like he's ever going to make 147 Wait, right you- now. What's Never the- mind 135. What's the, other, what's the other champion? That, what's the other champion? Burns, Burns was going to go against. I reckon that guy would have probably hit him. Yeah, Vasquez would have. Yeah, him. Vasquez would have beat him. He's, and that's he probably why he got a contract. He's lucky he got out of that one, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because yeah, so. that Vasquez, cause Vasquez is a, is a is a class above. Uh, he's a, he's a very good fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Fighter. You know what I mean? Ricky's lucky because Ricky right now, like, um, was listening to the Wise video. He's a guy now where he got the decision. He better not come out of Scotland. I mean, see the thing about uh, the Americans they're saying don't come to England, but it's Scotland we're talking about here, right? But you yeah. knew, but you still, even in Scotland, you still have to knock out. And me personally, I knocked him down. But if you got someone's knocking down, you should have finished the fight. I know, yeah, I agree that, yeah, he got robbed. Yeah, I'm not going to dispute that. But if you can finish, if you can knock him down and you can hurt him that badly with these broken jaw, you should have stopped him. You should have stopped him and that would have left no doubt. And then you would have, you know what I mean? You could have, you mm-hmm. could have soaked in your victory. You know, it kind of reminded me of that situation of when uh, Marvin Hagler and um, when he when he Marvin Hagler in his first fight with Ant- Vito Anafemo, and it was a draw where yeah. Hagler won the fight, 
And it was like, what the heck's that? What I got to do? So Beltran needs to understand. And Beltran with his bald head and Hagler with his bald head. Kind of remember the same thing. But you, you really, <laughs> Marvin Hagler at that point in his career said, okay, I know what I need to do now. And then when he, when he fought against Minter, you knew you saw what happened, doesn't it? That's what you need to do, isn't it? Yeah, but you get the feeling that Beltran had his chance and it's, it's and gone. It, no, we, 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 we. I think he knows it too. I think he knows it. How old is he? How old is he? Thirty odd. Thirty six. Well, Marvin no, Hagler no, was still in know. his. T- Marvin Hagler was still in his. T- was, I think it was like mm. mid twenties, maybe. At the time, when they were talking about the rematch, though, he was like not interested. Beltran. Yeah. He wants it, but he wants it in America. I think he. he, 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 he I don't care if you in America. You might he hasn't got the drawing power to demand anything. I know, and plus he's got robbed three times in America. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I know this you know, people that so from the frying pan into the fryer. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, you, Europe, I swear down. When, when um, Cassino said that, I was like, yeah, was, what, what do you mean? You're going to get robbed there. Exactly. Like, look, uh, like, look, look, see um, the fight between uh, Daniel Gill and, um, and Barker. Yeah. Look, okay, all right. Let's, let's, let, let's, let's, let's lay it out there, right? It, you know, but it, okay, you got the fight in it. But I'm telling you, you look like thingy. To a lot of people, you look like Gill won the fight, right? All right. Yeah, I, I'm glad Barker I won, agree. right? But fucking no, bro. It's like, okay, with everyone knew the story and this and that, he got it. Right? I'm happy Derek, but, but, but yeah, if you really did, I don't think they won that fucking rematch, man. That fucking, he's fit, he's fit, that Daniel Gill. All right, he's not the hardest puncher, but, bro, he's a nightmare to fight against, man. Mm-hmm. His stamina yeah, I is ridiculous. I don't, I, don't think, yeah. I don't think that they might get through the mandatory. Yeah, who's that? Uh, who they got? Felix Stern in Germany. Nah, they got that, man. He, well, yeah, they, they don't have to fight. They have to fight in Germany. Well, he's, he's going to put up, he, he'll, go to, he'll go down to uh, Pace Pits. He, and Felix yeah. Stam always wins. Yeah, because he yeah because he's got he's got the whole thing in Germany and the, he's got a stadium. Darren Darren hasn't got that. Has he? he hasn't got the O2 kind of thing like um. Mm-hmm. He hasn't got that. So you don't don't power. go to the UK, but you don't want to go to Germany either. Do you? Uh, you don't want to go to Germany, but I don't know. I think he, I think he could win that fight. I don't know. You do you do really? I don't know. Think, do you think do you think Darren Bark is better than Felix Stam? Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think I Darren, I'm, 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 I'm unsure. I think Darren, unsure. Barker, I think Darren Barker is better than Macklin. Yeah, but a lot of people are better than Macklin. Yeah, but Macklin, look what Macklin did to Stern. And he still lost. No, but a lot of people he, he, he a won. A lot of people think Macklin won, aren't they? Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. I'm one of those people, but he still lost, didn't he? He still lost yeah. his title. Oh. His title Judah, shot. Judah, 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 Judah. Can't argue about that. Sven Oki was was you know, one of the fights there too, didn't he? Oh, he was bad. That that guy he was bad. I don't. <laughs> think, I don't think. I don't think Barker will keep the title very long. I think he just wanted to win the title, and then he wants yeah. to. I got. I got him. I got him beaten. I got him winning that. I know. I know we're off the subject, people, because I know people are listening to this because I'm not recording. But nah, I don't. I don't think. I don't. I got him winning that fight, but. Getting, but I'm just realizing how important the Dean Power thing. Dean Power is is, is is it was very valuable, and um, I don't think Frank Warren. Well, we're gonna. I'm gonna pay interest in to see what happens with Frank Warren. His ma- his last matchmaking was probably with um, Derek and and the fights thing. But after this now, I don't know what Derek's gonna do, mate, because the, the matchmaking mm. is not there he's no more. Gerber, isn't yeah, I know. Right, this, that, Gerber, that, that, was Dean, that was Dean Power's last last match. Is what I'm saying. Now he's probably gone. So I don't know what. And Billy Jones and the rest of them. I don't know where's the Frank Warren stable from this point onwards. How are they gonna go on? Are they if they start losing, all their fights start losing, you can realise how important Dean Power was. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If all yeah. the fighters from this point onwards now, we're gonna it's close not not these fights coming up, the fights after the end of their fight. Like after um Billy Joe Saunders gets past Ryder, which I feel he will. After okay. Derek gets past Gerbil, which you I feel he will. After what happens after that because the matchmaker's not there no more. What was the harder? What would have been the harder fight, Boystov or Gerber? Boystov. Why do you say that? Because Gerber's he's one of the most limited fighters I've ever seen. He's he's got nothing, honestly. He's got absolutely nothing. He's got he's got he's got an okay punch, but he he's very 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 limited, extremely limited. And he doesn't like taking punches back himself. Well, you guys know your stuff, man. I think I'm after to put, put a plug on, on the recording right here. Yeah. <laughs> to because, no, to, well, because, to, to because um, obviously it was um, uh, Powell. He he um, decided on boy stuff first, didn't he? Then, then yeah. boy stuff pulled out. Mm-hmm. So. You see what I'm saying? And that's to do with all Powell. I'm just realizing how, how important he was, man. Because maybe these fighters, they wouldn't have probably got to the status they were without him behind there. Because like you said, and I, I did point out about the Khan thing. And I did point out about Ricky Hatton against Colazzo. I mentioned all these things here. The moment they start breaking out on their own, mate, they got, they got, their chins got checked a bit. They got mm-hmm. checked. 
all of them got checked. You know? So who is the match the match room matchmaker? Uh, that's a good point. That's a, that was a mouthful too, wasn't it? Wait, it's a good point. Whoever yeah, is, he match room matchmaker, you know. whoever it was, he, he needs sacking. I'm telling you, <laughs> whoever, whoever he is, he um, I don't. Whoever he is, I don't think they're gonna sack him because I don't think because matchmaker they're the promoters. But I don't know, you know. I think maybe the managers, the I'm managers of the fight, yeah. Because you know, I don't. Yeah, actually, you know what I think it is. I think because uh, they're a promotional company, I think. They have their own manager, and I think the manager probably just decides that. Or, 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 or maybe you think he gets the fights and the, no, they, they I don't go. think they'd let the managers do it. I think they'd have an independent matchmaker, man. Or maybe, or, or maybe, to... or maybe they put the cards on the table. No, right? I don't know. If... Someone, someone like picked that cello, didn't he, for um, for Burns? Whoever that was, he yeah, didn't. He yeah. wasn't very smart. Well, but I think I think Burns, I think Frank Warren, I think they didn't care about him. But but, but I tell you, what, Eddie done a good job of. of Burns is making a nice little. He's making a nice little cash out there, though, in in Scotland, though, isn't it? The atmosphere was great. I don't think he is. I think he. I don't think he is, man. He, uh, you don't think he's still suing him, though, isn't it? Frank's you still what? suing him. Frank's still oh, suing. Him. Yeah, Frank's still pushing that forward. Frank's a freaking. It's a bit of a barracuda when it comes to the courts, man. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Burns is Burns is Burns purses are gonna thing. I, I think Nathan Cleverley's done. I think Burns is done. They should have stayed with Frank, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they did this day with Frank. This is they would go to Frank. Well, what happens? Would you would you laugh though if uh, George Groves knocks out Carl Froch and then takes the title back to Frank Warden? Oh, that'd be painful, innit? <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> and yeah, would just walk away from boxing again. Yeah, 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 yeah. If George was to lose now, it wouldn't be that bad. He'd just learn his lesson. But I think his type of guy, his confidence is gone. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I think cars are gonna cars are gonna give it to him. You know that. He's gonna put a nice one on him. You know that. Yeah, knock him out. Yeah, you you got him knocking him out. Yeah, knock him out late. Whoa. I think he'll start well, Groves. Then Froch will catch up, start landing to yeah, the think, body think, and yeah. the head. You know, what I think it's gonna be like it's gonna be like that. Who's the guy who beat up cleverly? What's his name? Kovalev. Yeah, it's gonna be that sort of thing. And boy against man, and he's fucking out man him. It's just gonna just. He's gonna have enough. Have none of his rubbish, mate, and just bash <laughs> him up. You know what I mean? That's... <laughs> Did you hear the game plan from um, Cleverly's dad? Yeah. What's his game we plan? Were, we were just gonna go out there and soak up the pressure for a bit. Is that what he says? Like, Who can send his son out <laughs> to take a kick? In? Is that what he said? <laughs> who send, who said, that's what he said. Who sends their son out to take punches for? Fun? For four to five rounds. <laughs> so got the pressure, you know. <laughs> Against a big punchy, you know. <laughs> yeah. God. Is, is it so got the pressure? Yeah. It's crazy. That's what he's talking about, his son. His son is the sponge. <laughs> <laughs> that's some madness there. Oh, like, that, that's what they think. You know, um, who's been sacked out of that? Someone got sacked out of, the, of that stable. Who got sacked out of that? Who did they sack out of that? Probably his dad. <laughs> I think his dad's all right, man. No, nah, his dad needs to go. He, he, he's nah, dad, man, I like he's not him out there to soak up pressure yeah, and not you, move. You, you need to be detached from your train. You, you can't be <laughs> going on um, to your dad and eating dinner. You, you, you need you need a coach. You need a coach who is not going to be partial. Who's going to? I mean, like I, I don't think I've never thought the dad thing was very healthy. Are you European? Who you? Who did you hear that soaking up the pressure from? That's what he said. Is that, that's what the dad actually said? No, that's what they said afterwards so they were like <laughs> the idea was funny, that he was so good pressure that's actually the funniest thing I've heard in my life I mean how could you be watching boxing <laughs> watching <laughs> like this this guy it was obvious how hard the guy punched I knew that I mean I'm, I'm watching the fights on video and I can see he can punch very hard and you how, how could you even possibly say that he must have had some next level like a bit like faith in Nathan's chin yeah, and durability. Yeah, yeah, they I did. Mean, See, the thing is, when I made the video, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, they believe in Nathan's chin." I said, "Look, you—it's not a matter of having a good chin. If someone punches really, really hard, your chin mm. can be excellent. Mm. But if someone hits, you need good defense. You need well, well, at least it, in the first five I or six rounds. Two of the knockdowns were due to body shots, anyway. So the chin didn't even come into it, did it? Mm. Well, I saw a headshot. Wasn't there, wasn't it a headshot first? What, what there was a headshot. Yeah, the, body, I think, I think... the body shot. The body. It was the body shot. He hit me with the left. He hit me no, with the left. I rem- I, this is how I remember it. Yeah, go on. Uh, he is Nathan flew this stupid jab, his left jab, and he counted over the top with the right hand. 
Yeah, and then and he threw s- one to the body. Yeah, and then he's yeah, there you go, there the you body. go. That's right, that's right. Yeah, he did, he did, he did, he did. That backed him up, and then he went to the ropes and he threw yeah. the group to the body. And then Nathan was in pain at that point. He look, man, no if you're fighting someone like if you look when you when you're fighting oh, hard, see that's what Ali did. He wore out Foreman. He just tried to stop him getting a cleat. And then in the later rounds, then you, you then you try and go at him. You know, you know but, what? Cleverly looked a novice though. He looked like he could. He looked like he forgot how to fight when he when he gets called off. Yeah. Is that he was intimidated by the power straight away, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he looked like the man forgot how to fight. He like he, he looked like a complete a boy. It was all I could say. He looked like a boy against a man, a grown ass. He didn't know man. what he was doing. That, that nah. that's the truth of it. He didn't know. What he, I mean, like not being horror, he didn't actually know what he was doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did, the there, there was no was game plan wrong. there. Tactics can make a whole fight. Yeah. Tactics can make or break. Yeah. And you know, we were sent in. You know, prepared to lose. Basically, they prepared. Yeah. You know, to fail. Yeah. It was uh, awful. Yeah. Yep, 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 yeah. 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 Can't freaking on, man. See, no, that's another thing. That's because like beat is right because when you shouldn't have, I don't think you should have at some point your dad. When you get to a certain level, you shouldn't have your dad. Mm. You know, as the main trainer, you can be also there. Yeah. I don't just don't think you should be the main trainer because too detached. Too. I mean, you need to be more detached from the situation. Exactly. Someone else would have said, "Look, we're not taking those punches." I, I know you believe in your chin. But I think I believe in your legs or something. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I believe in move in movement. It's all he needed. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, w- he would have done better if he if he moved. We can't, no, we. It's obvious that it's obvious. Look, if he got knocked out, in, if he got knocked out in say the eight for the late rounds, then you could say okay, fair enough. But he didn't even try to get through the, the early rounds against a big puncher. He, he, he like, mm-hmm. he, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? At least he, he needed to be cautious for the first four, four, four or five. At least, yeah, definitely. It just, just yeah, exactly. They, they decided to soak up this pressure and then have him gas out. <laughs> That's funny. That thing, is. And try to gas the guy out. I was thinking. Funny, now, funny. now to the to their credit, I'm just giving them a slight bit of credit. It did look like that plan was starting to work. But then, then he knocked him down and then knocked him out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but you know, you don't send the guy out to do that. No, I just funny, super, I know. Go out there and take a kick in. Go on, son. Who says that? Oh, done my head in that. That's actually I've done my head in. That's funny, actually. Funny, <laughs> you're so funny, the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> against against Kovalev, man. man. That's so, just crazy. So, 